Hi, welcome to Elementary Music with Donna. I am Donna Rodenizer. It's October when I'm making this video and I'm going to talk to you about planning seasonal songs in your music lesson plans. I have created some seasonal packages of music for you. Hopefully those will be helpful for you as you're doing this kind of planning. There are turkey songs, Halloween songs, and those are at donnanandy.com. But what I want to talk to you about today is the fact that those seasonal packages of songs are not whole lesson plans. They are actually options for you as you are creating an overall lesson plan in the busy month of October. So when my littles walk into the music classroom, there's music playing, they're moving to that music, or we have a welcome song that we're moving to. They come in, we sit down, we sing our news. I sing, what is your news today? And they sing me their answer. I ask for usually five pieces of news and we start our, our class with singing right off the bat. Then we would do a familiar song as a review from another day, probably something that I'm going to be using as a concept song in another class, but it's a preparation thing. Then I would do a song that I'm going to actually ask them to focus. We'll pull something out of that as a conscious music element. I want to do that so that I have them at close to the beginning when they're still focused and on task. We get that finished and we would then move to some kind of movement activity so that gets up and get some jiggle wheels out, sit back down. And then I might go into a song or two that relate to a season that's happening. So I might do a turkey song that has some finger play actions with them and then a turkey song that involves some movement and a game song. We sing our goodbye song and out they go. So you will have five or six different activities and only one slot in that five or six uh, activities that you do in your music class will be seasonal. If you start off with your favorite turkey song game close to the beginning of your music class, then they're going to be sort of out there and then you have to bring them back. And that's harder than starting them focused and get that finished and, and put away and then go to the singing game and then bring them back and send them out of the room. With your older students, if they're going to be doing something like Ghost of John, for instance, I would do that closer to the beginning of class because we need time to work on the creative process that I'm asking of them. Initially, when I would sing the song, I would sing it and do the teaching of the song and making sure that the melody's in place. We might do one melodic ostinato and one rhythmic ostinato, and then we would put it away and we would come back to that. So Ghost of John is going to happen over three or four classes. But as you go and it becomes more complex and you're building ostinati and this arrangement with Ghost of John, you're going to want to leave enough time. So you've got probably that middle 20 minutes of your class where you're working on that. And again, this is with older students. They've got an attention span where you can do that. You couldn't do that with your younger classes because they just need to, to change and, and move more often than that. If you are looking for songs that are not seasonal, if you have students in your class who don't celebrate those seasons, you're going to have to look for things that will be able to replace the same concepts that you're trying to focus on with the seasonal songs. For instance, at fullvoice.com, there are two songs that involve vocalizing. I've written both of these songs. One is called Halloween, and it's a freebie at fullvoice.com. And the other one is called Wolf in the Forest. The Halloween song has, you know, interspersed in the song. So you're going to do that vocalizing as part of a melody and part of a song. Can't do Halloween? Go to Wolf in the Forest, where you have Ooh, wolf in the forest, ooh, howling at the moon, ooh, wolf in the forest, ooh, mournful tune. And then the chorus of this song is actually all ooze, and it's a lovely melodic minor. It's still in the minor key. It's still vocalizing. It has no reference to anything seasonal. It's just about a wolf in the forest. So there are two options to cover the same concept. One is seasonal, one is not. When you are working on these seasonal songs with your students, there's lots of opportunity to do dramatization and vocalizing. And so they have great merit 
outside of the fact that it's also something that's tied in with what's happening in the lives of your students. And again, if you've got students who aren't celebrating those seasonal things, then you will have to find other things that connect and use those instead. You'll know from the students that you have in front of you in your classroom, which is appropriate for you to use and which ones you have to substitute out. So if you go to donanindy.com, you will find turkey songs, you'll find some Halloween songs with uh, pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and that kind of thing. You will find witch watches, which was written for upper elementary students to either sing or to dramatize as a spoken piece. So there's lots of options there if you are looking for seasonal songs to fit into that seasonal slot in your overall music planning. I hope you have a great day making music and make music a great part of your day.